Risk is back on the table. The appetite for extremely risky assets has expanded since the Fed encouraged the behavior intentionally. It seems that there's a never-ending desire to take on more risk, more debt, more margin, more potential. But of course, that works in both ways. The potential benefits could be outweighed by a bankruptcy or default. Nobody thinks about this type of situation because they are carefree. The Fed will save the day, right? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to talk about junk. No, not the junk I'm showing you on the screen. However, it's not too far from that. So of course, we've always seen this junk debt coming in. We're talking about low grade bonds. And this type of investment has really seen an acceleration and it tends to be when risk is on the table, okay? You always get this happening. You get Get more corporations that are selling this type of debt you have higher yields that are needed to make up for the lower returns that they were getting throughout 2018 and suddenly they're looking around where can I get some yield where's more profit I need it so you take on more risk and of course that eventually ends up with a big problem if you go to certain countries for debt and you're looking at some of the emerging markets perhaps you might be able to get a good yield off of it but do you want to really be buying into Argentina's 100 year bond would that be sufficient for you I don't think that's a good idea I don't think that's a wise investment choice you look around to some of these other markets or other corporations out there if everything stays okay and there's no financial crisis there's no defaults and bankruptcies you're gonna be fine but is that really smart well it's up to you it all depends on how much much risk you're willing to take it depends on your portfolio the way it's structured there are a lot of factors here but most people they do not understand risk so let's talk about junk Bond traders are dusting off their tried-and-true post-crisis playbook after the Fed's pivot last month. What they don't realize is that the game has most likely changed. This is an article out of Bloomberg. Then we're going to talk about some others, but let's stick with this for a moment. In an unbashed reach for yield, investors suddenly can't get enough of the riskiest debt. With the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. Corporate High Yield Bond Index posting a staggering 5.25% total return in the first five weeks of 2019 led by those securities rated in the CCC tier. You have to understand, if we're talking about triple A rated investments, this is considered to be the creme de la creme, the top of the food chain. And when you get to levels of CCC, you're talking about the garbage on the floor. You're talking about the dirt on the ground. And that might be good for some people, but of course, that's where most of the risk is. That's where you take the highest risk war reward ratio and of course that ends up burning people oftentimes so in the bottom they're talking about the fact that december seems like forever ago remember it was the first month in a decade that no speculative grade borrower tapped the market how can that be well because individuals were basically scared out of their minds at this point the corporations were not able to to put this out and everything was basically at a standstill and that's why you had the markets just free falling as it says here it was even buoyed by no new issuance junk bonds still fell the most in three years okay so let's move on to this one as you look at the corresponding chart rising recession risk the 10-year three-month u.s yield curve signals a growing chance of a slowdown recession probability in 12 months that's showing us it has has gone to a level it hasn't been at since the financial crisis and this is something that I always like to talk about because risk is so important and it is not priced in today you have computers trading everything and they're fast and that is really an understatement you must understand they can trade at lightning speed faster than the average individual even if they consider themselves to be a day trader and they're so fast the computer algorithms are literally at lightning speeds and they can buy and sell before you can even blink your eye and this is not understood by most people 
their idea of risk is not the same as yours. You have a savings account. You have investments. You have feelings of regret. The machines don't have any of this. They are simply trading on information they're programmed with. Okay, that's the difference here. Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings sold $2 billion of bonds in the largest triple C rated deal since September, the latest sign that the US junk bond market has been roused from its sleep. And this is a sign that risk is on the table. The bond sale rated CAA1, very confusing, by Moody's, an equivalent CCC plus by the S&P, is the largest largest in the lowest junk ratings tier since this particular example in September. High yield debt has already proven to be one of the best performing asset classes in fixed income this year. CCC rated bonds that have so far returned just over 6%. So regardless of where we're getting our statistics from, the returns are very high. As you can see, imagine all throughout 2018, investors were losing money. You look at the hedge funds, you look at 93% of assets losing value in 2018 as a whole. That's not a good sign. So you got to look around, you got to get some yield and perhaps you're willing to take some risk so this is what you do you go into the worst type of debt you can possibly find and you put some money in in these cases here we're talking about billions and billions of dollars worth and you try to make money for your company or if it's an individual for your own portfolio and I personally believe that this is when you know that we are towards the end of a cycle at the beginning of the cycle, you don't have this type of behavior. You're looking for risk, you're shifting your portfolio to make it more reasonable, more sound, more spread out and diversified. But at the end of the cycle, you're looking under every rock and every nook and cranny to try and find something that's going to give you some profit. And just to note right at the bottom, the deal adds momentum to a junk bond market that had fallen into a slumber at the end of 2018. And what happened at the end of 2018? Well, of course, from October to December, we saw the markets falling down. And throughout this period of time, individuals started moving around their portfolio somewhat. We saw some changes occur. This obviously led to decreased values in equities. People started wetting the bed and then you had a huge run up after that there's speculation of why that occurred obviously you had 64 billion dollars worth of money moving into equities i have covered that already and you saw what happened with the fed and all of their messages others have suggested this is because of the shorts out there right now anyway regardless I just wanted to show you the fact that the risk is definitely back on the table and this is how you know this is one way to tell Take a look at the second sentence here. Fund inflows have accelerated and new deals are oversubscribed by several multiples. A dovish outlook from the Fed has boosted demand for fixed rated assets and risk sentiment overall. The high yield index is at a record high right now. That to me is worrisome. When you see a record in risk, then you've got a problem. More money is flowing into these risky assets than ever before. Shouldn't that be a worry to anybody? I know if you're a regular subscriber on here, then you are also seeing the same information I am. When all of this corporate debt has been building up and building up and building up, and then of course we have this big issue that is going to be presented to us at some point. It could come from corporate debt. It could come from one of these garbage risky assets that's out there. We could have some sort of subprime crisis that exists again. We don't know, but the counterparty risk is obviously there because one company owns the debt of another company, which owns the debt of another country, of another state, of another city, of another individual. And it goes on and on in this big cycle. And it's all because of the creation 
creation of this madness they call derivatives, but nothing seems to change. So let's look at this here. You can see the risk rally, CCC rated debt outperformed higher quality bonds. And of course, in terms of your return, you expect to get better returns out of these risky assets. That's for sure. But you don't want it to be at a record high. That's not good. That means that individuals have to pour their money into these type of assets because they're not finding the yield elsewhere. And of course, this is not even necessarily that, okay, they're not investing in AAA, they're investing in single A or even in the Bs. We're talking about the Cs. This is bottom of the barrel type of investments and they are rocketing higher. Not good at all. And the last thing I want to touch on, the amount of junk rated debt issuance at any time matters for the U.S. economy. While robust sales can saddle companies with unsustainable debt loads and pave the way for subsequent pullbacks, they generally contribute to economic growth by enabling companies to refinance debt and invest in people and equipment. So I just wanted to highlight the reason why this even exists. It's not because this is some junky, garbage, risky company. It's th just the way that it happens to be. A sharp slowdown in debt sales as occurred in late November and December can quickly translate to slower economic growth. So we can use this as one small indicator in addition to all the hundreds and hundreds of other ones that are present. For the Fed officials, the fickle nature of debt investors presents challenges if rates stay too low for too long, financial bubbles can form. If the Fed adopts a tougher stance, the risk of recession is heightened. Obviously, they're back into a corner. They're in very big trouble today, just like in the last cycle, just like in the one before. They're trying to increase interest rates. They get to a certain point. They can't increase anymore. They stay at that level for a period of time, and before you know it, they admit there's a recession and interest rates are dropping as the panic ensues. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. This is very important information that I bring out every single day. And to support me, just click the like button. That's all you have to do. So I do appreciate that very much. And of course, if you want the financial education that wasn't taught to you in school, that was kept from you intentionally, all you have to do is click the link below. It's going to take you over to Amazon and and that will allow you to flip through the pages of the books to see if you like them. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.